Eine gefragte And we also have Mr. Joshua Ajiman with IOT Network. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up to the man who came out season three. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, so we would plead that you give us your audience and during this next 30 minutes as these distinguished gentlemen share some tips that are going to elevate our career, going to inspire us and also help us to innovate as, we, um, as future engineers. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for making time to join us this afternoon. All right. So we first of all want you to introduce yourself and tell us what you do at your various organizations. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, my name is Dr. Kojo Dompre from the physics department. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a senior lecturer at the department and I'm in charge mostly of the engineering physics where I lecture um, computer programming modeling simulations, um, digital electronics, data acquisition, uh, we are nodding your head there. <laughs> uh, analog electronics and those stuff. Um, actually, yeah, when you talk of physics, the engineering side, I'm um, much more prominent there. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Jonathan Kinevisoa, the founder and CEO of Innovative Stem Center. You heard what Dr. Dombre said, the things he teaches here. We, we make the things he's teaching in the university easy for students as young as four years old. So we have four year, four, four year old students, modeling staff, doing electronics, IoT. So that is what we do at Innovtech STEM Center. We also provide scholarship for young, young inventors. Okay. We have the resources, the mentorship, like the support, everything you need to bring your ideas to life. That is what we do at Innovtech STEM Center. Thank you. Happy birthday, boy. So my name is Joshua Pokrajwa. I'm the president and co-founder for IoT Network Hub, an organization on a mission to impact one billion young Africans by 2050. I'm also the president for the Ghana STEM Network, an organization that goes to ensure that every young Ghanaian has access to practical education. I'm also the chief evangelist officer for STEM A, an organization which goes to ensure that every student can have access to the practical tools for learning. And I'm also the CEO and co-founder for Personnet, a company I started in 19... Okay, I'll end it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, we first of all want to take the first part of our team, that is elevating young engineers. We want to find out from you, how are these young engineers or future engineers going to reach their potentials? What kind of skills do you think are needed in this 21st century for you? Know, you know, there's this. Uh, Ghana, we are not building rockets. We are not building planes. We are not building most of these new technologies. So we can't challenge them. So I think that's why this program is important. The simple way is that there should be a way to change this secondary education to involve the different dimension of, so that the STEM, the STEM is not just going to be science uh, secretaries, right? <laughs> and we're going to be science engineers. We learn how to put things with our hands. Our teachers know how to train us. Our teachers, the secondary school, when you go to the secondary schools, when I was teaching at secondary school, you see the, the tools are there, the teachers know how to teach them. But the curriculum has been drafted in such a way that the teacher is limited from applying what he knows. You see? And then, why is is going to test the students based on the curriculum that has been drafted? So if a teacher has a, a, a skill of teaching the children how to read, why is not going to teach them, uh, test them on the reading? So the, the children will not even learn the reading. But here we have brilliant minds, 
who are willing to learn. But if you have a curriculum which is limiting them from learning. So the way forward is that we have to change the curriculum that is being taught at the secondary schools and the universities. Okay? Look, we come to the university, like the, the university level 300. This is where students are learning and gates and all gates. Digital level, and gates, all gates. At the university level 300. And gates and all gates, when you go to China, it's taught at the SSS and GSS level. Okay? Because they are now thinking of quantum computing. And you at the university level, this is the time you are teaching hand gates, analog electronics. Uh, what is this? <laughs> okay? And, and it's, it's so passionate when you, you see that you have been limited. If you want to change the curriculum, it has to go through so many channels. Five years, the curriculum is not changed. Okay? So I think the, um, the way forward is that even though we, this is a small summit, we can make a case. We can make a case that the academia industry collaboration shows that we should change our curriculum to suit the modern times. Because how can a, how can a Chinese child do the whole thing at, at the, as early as SSS1? And that Ghanaian child will have to wait when he's doing his masters that he has to build a, build a drone. Why? And what does what does the drone comprise of? The drone comprise of a DC motor. Two uh, four DC motors placed at specific and then you put the power to it. Uh, if as you rotate, it lifts the same out. That's all. So please, you are the future generation, you have to voice out me. I'm being paid though. So as we have Nanam here, we have policy makers here, this is what we have found. That our teachers at the secondary school, they are capable of teaching the children the modern, the modern courses, if we give them a little training. So let's change the curriculum for them to do that. Yeah, thank you. Amazing um, comments and inspiring ones, of course. One thing I love about this is that they are not, I mean, sabotaging the government. They are telling you what you can also do. So after today, you go and sit in your room and you complain that the government is not doing anything or the curriculum is not favoring you. Then, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot engage in that conversation with you because Joshua has taught you how to even discover your purpose at an engineer summit. This is a wow moment. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do our teaser again. Young Engineer Summit 2023. Okay, thank you very much. So we are wrapping up, but I want to find out. To elevate, innovate, and inspire. It means it's a challenge we have as a nation and continent, which we have to innovate around the problem. And to innovate, we need to elevate the young people and inspire them to innovate more. So on the context of the team, after having programs like this, the way to inspire and elevate people, and when they live here, they become innovators to innovate around the problems we have, and come up with cool solutions. When we start the space company, that will create the job for young engineers who are pursuing their career. So I think that's what I want to contribute to. Right, I I also believe that we don't have to be in the university before you learn how to do 3D modeling. You don't have to be in the university before you learn how to create circuits, how to do like basic electronics. And I, I believe you need those skills, like as young as four years old. Okay. So that is what we are doing to empower young engineers. When you come to Teshi, like throughout your country, you travel to provide access to like high quality STEM education to students as young as four years old. And I can tell you there are students that we train that can like go on competitions with university students in terms of 3D modeling, in terms of basic electronics, in terms of security building, like all those amazing stuff. So providing the skills at a very young age you will help the students build up on it when they get to to the university. Okay, so that is what I can approach. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, me coming from the academia side, what I can share with you is first, what is what is STEM? Because STEM used to be the key word here. Who can tell me what STEM is? Because if you don't understand what that word STEM is, and what, what does it do to you as a student? Then, I mean, you're going to go round, 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 round. Okay, let me tell you, those of us who were educated in the 80s, there was something we used to call art and craft. At, at the end of every term, you would design some art, you would use some milk, cocoa, or other milk, milk tin to design a car, then you take it to school, and then you will be graded in addition to what um, you have learned. This art and craft, somehow, somehow, was abolished in our schools. It was abolished in our schools, and no child go to school with any art or craft at the end of the term. After 20 years, something has resurrected or resurfaced in our education sector called STEM. What is STEM? STEM is basically art and craft. Okay? STEM is basically art and craft. You see, as we hear the education sector made this um, policy of abolishing art and craft in our schools, some countries continue. Countries like India, America, they continue with this. And now they have advanced to the state that they have automated their art and craft. And now we are now going back to them and we are buying what they have automated and bringing it back into our schools as STEM. Mm. So you go to most of these schools and you will see they have some Lego robots walking up and down and we say it's STEM. How did they get there? So we have this concept which um, brings us to something we call skip gradients. Skip gradients is the child is being given something to, to learn which he doesn't know how the thing was started. So believe me, if we as people don't go back to the basics of art and craft, let the child design the art, show him how to put how to put the coding in there to control the DC motors, uh, how to call it, the ultrasonic sensors, how to control these things themselves, and rather we import the code and then give it to them as art and craft. Uh, STEM, believe me, we are not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere as a country. We are going to spend millions of dollars importing what they have done to give to our kids, and we are still going to remain where we are. So, it, it brings in to the, the, to the point that what is, what is engineering? Because here, we are here to a young engineer summit. What is engineering? And when, uh, even, even, even the word summit, what is summit? It seems Ghana education is having a problem. We, we, we don't really um, zero down on the words we are using for our students, for them to understand it, to come up of something with it. We are using high, high level words on them, and the students are also just going by it. Oh, I'm an engineer, I'm an innovator, and I have a Lego robot here. What, what is it? Now, after teaching for some time in university, this is what I've realized. That we don't, um, I mean, teach the basics. All that the child does is, I have this macro controller there, I give it to him. We go to GitHub, we go to chat GPT, whatever it is, and then he downloads the code onto the system, and then the system is working and is happy. But that's not how we grow a country. That's how we grow engineering in a country. Mm -hmm. You young guys here should all make it a point to learn and understand the ways that we are, we are teaching you. Learn to program yourself. Learn to experiment it. Learn to troubleshoot it yourself. Learn to implement it. And that's the way out. Other than that, believe me, what that we are doing is just going to be that skip gradient which we have skipped for 20 years. And that's what we are going to do. Like the first speaker when he said, there was a key thing that he said. 
He said the AI does not include Africans. No, we are using it, but it doesn't include us because we Africans are not programmers. We are not innovators. We are just importing and using it. And I am so glad Joshua has started this thing. That he is targeting the youth. Letting them know. You could have bought the technology from, from UK and given it to you. But he said, look, let's have a meeting. Let's gather. Let's have a summit. Summit is gathering of engineers. Gathering of professionals. Let's, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's see where the gap is. Let's bridge it. Alright? And with this, believe me that as we have started, you, you, you young ones who be our future leaders, you are really going to make us proud in 30 years to compete with Elon Musk. You see, this young boy who came there up here, uh, where is he? Where's my small boy? Wow. He, yeah, this boy is, 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 is a genius. You give him any work, he does it. He doesn't copy the code. You see, see that boy. He doesn't copy the code. But most of us here who are in the universities, we copy the code from GitHub and implement it. If we don't stop it, is going to have an effect on us. We are going to be just, um, how do you call it? There's a way. Um, consumers of the electronics that you do for us. So, this is my opening statement. Thank you. Wow. That was a powerful opening statement from Dr. Dombre. So, I think I would just want to come back to Dr. Dombre about this. So, what's the way for it for us in academia? How is GES or that they are going to bridge this gap that if I need to find an education system? Thank you. You know, in, 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 in education, there are certain points that each of us have to know. Um, do you know, we, we all learn, right? We all learn. We all learn, but do you know how to learn? <laughs> Has anybody taught you how to learn? And on learn? I want to know. You, you ask, uh, we are yet we are interacting. Has anybody taught you how to learn? You know, when I was in the secondary school, if you are going to have an exam, I take a book and I say, by the end of the day, I should finish here. Right? Then you rush through the whole thing. Then at, when the exam comes, you score zero. You've learned by score zero. Means you didn't learn anything. So the way forward is that with this robotics and engineering thing, absence of mass. You are teaching the child a robot. You are teaching the child microcontrollers. There's, there's no microcontroller for the child to see, right? So the child just imagine the thing and forget it. So we have to have. The mass, the mass itself. If I say it is, it is a DC motor you are talking about. Give it to the child. This is a DC motor. This is how it is controlled. It will stick in his mouth forever. The second one is what we call skipped gradients. You see, these SSS students who are here, we are telling them about AI, 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 machine learning, whatever. It's, it's, do you really understand it? <laughs> what that thing is. There's a huge skip in it, right? Which, which we are we are giving to them. But if if we have got an AI here, machine uh, machine here, we program it. This is the code. This is what goes into it. The child will get it. So we have this skip in going on around, and we are not able to get it. Then we have another one. The most important thing is misunderstood words. Misunderstood words. I'm going to give you one. So today we're going to learn about quantum computing and going to use the KRS optimizing stochastic gradient plot. <laughs> yes, you all know your head. Yeah, KRS is all about optimizing uh, stochastic gradient plot. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. We understand. Then the teacher moves on. The end of the term, you don't remember anything. And this has been aggregated by aggregated by this semester system. The child chewed everything, he poured, had a A, the next semester forgot everything. <laughs> and when he finished school, you want him, you want this child, you want this child to have a skill to be employed. You go for interview, he fails. 
right? So the way forward is that teachers must spend time to teach the children how to learn. Yeah. If they know how to learn, the child himself will, will sit up and learn and develop things. I think they want to be developers, that's why they are here. Right, thank you. What's the way for it for those in the industry? How best can you go to know this like ourselves here? But they didn't have the question. Okay, thank you very much. So I was asking how the industry can also help young engineers like yourselves here to be able to bridge the gap between the academia industry or the knowledge you've learned over the years on campus and how to bring them into life, how to bring them out as better projects for humanity. As I, I said earlier, we, from InnoTech's STEM Center, we, we have like a fully resourced lab for anyone who wants to like bring their ideas to life. Okay, so maybe you want to 3D print something, you don't know how to do it, we we'll teach you how to do it, and you do it yourself. We we'll teach you the physics, the materials you need, based on the projects that you are going to work on. And it's going to be a flexible product. We'll teach you the kind of filament you use. And it's going to be a hard product. We'll teach you the kind of filament you use. You know, so we teach the basics of it. We just, we just don't teach you, oh, do this and do this and that. Oh, we teach you the basics. That is why we teach students, as like young as four years old, like 3D print. I hope you get it. Yes, so I, I believe that as students, you know, when you want to connect academia to industry, you need to, like, give yourself the opportunity. Like, you, you already have the opportunity, it's already out there for you. But then, are you taking it? There are a number of, like, companies around looking for ready students to train, to empower, like, to inspire, to elevate. You get it? But then you are not showing up. You are not showing up because you believe that, oh, when I go there. I, I'm speaking from experience because recently I got an application from a student who has just graduated. And then, like, the person wanted to come and work with us. So I saw, I saw the degree and then I was like, wow, well, you did this and then you, you are done, like, first class. So, like, can you do this? It was like, to be honest, I don't have any idea of what I went to learn in this school. I'm just, like, I'm here to now learn it's like really, really well. It isn't. So, going to spend four years in school to learn things that you can learn, even while like you are having your free time. Isn't it something that you think you should do? And this is what you really want to do. You want to be an engineer, let's say you want to be a mechanical engineer. There are certain things you need to master. Okay, you need to learn how to 3D model. You need to learn how to like draw. Okay, you need technical drawing and all those things. There are things that you need to do. You don't need to like be in the university before you learn those things. So like getting the foundations right and then connecting with people who are really like really willing to help you. It's a way to go. There are opportunities everywhere. Like Mr. Joshua said, if you complete and you need a job in the engineering field, you link up to me. For me, not only the job, if you need the skills, okay? If you need to learn 3D print, if you want to learn laser engraving, like all those amazing technologies, just reach out. Okay, we are here for you. Thank you. has been said. I want to put it into different categories of the way forward. So first we need government, private sector, development partners, civil society, and every individual. I'm going to touch on one at a time. The role everybody has to play to ensure that we can have the way forward. Now I'll start from government. With government we need good policies. So if we have a STEM education policy, that will ensure that 
whole educational system, academia, as doctor was complaining about, we can have the fundamental goal from crash. So by the time you get to university studying physics, you know LED and anything you have to know as a fundamental. You don't come to university to learn the basics. So yes, we start from policy. Uh, two, we also need infrastructure. If we are going to do this, that means we need to upgrade our labs from these science labs to whatever standard we need to set to ensure that we have all the tools. Again, we can't start abstract thinking or teaching from scratch. So you get to university or senior high before you see LED, right? So it has to be practical from the ground to the top. And it's very expensive. How are we can start? I know there's a lot of things going on with the four senior high school we have, focusing all on STEM um, at the moment, and then the development of coding in our curriculum. I know some, some ICT, some senior school have elective ICT, where they are studying coding and all that. These are some of the processes I think we need to accelerate. From the side of, okay, I've also had the opportunity to be in a, a stakeholder engagement for Ministry of Communication on the Digital Agenda Policy. So we have shared our input with the Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology to have a policy for science, technology, innovation for the entire nation, probably for the next five, 10 years to come. We had opportunity to be with them as well. So we also get to see that gradually government is seeing the need for change. As to whether it's going to be now, I can say. As to whether it's going to work, I can say. But one thing government always do is they put down policies. The rest is up to private sector. So I'll come next to private sector. Now private sector or individuals who want to start businesses are the ones who have to understand the policies that have been made, the opportunities that we have, and go ahead and start businesses around them. So for example, we have the like of some schools starting TVETs, like the Training Institute and all that. These are all private sectors who saw the policy that the Russian government is going, and they started creating their own companies and institutions to train people in their schools. So their TVETs is very hot, because now that's where the opportunities are. Right so again, from there, you can come to the development partners. For a private sector to start, it needs money. Money at times government don't have. So development partners like GIZ, World Bank, MasterCard come in to give them grants. So it means if you want to start your own training programs and you push harder, you can get support to also address the same issue we are addressing as a way forward. Now the last part one will be civil society like organization organize this program. It means we need to have a lot of NGOs and civil society who sees the problem and not wait for government to fix it or private sector to fix it for money, but for the sake of impact, they'll go a long way to also address some of the challenges. And that's what uh, my colleague here is doing with his company. That's what I'm also doing with IoT and the Ghana STEM Network to ensure that we can also speed up the processes. Government will do, but not today. The plans are there. Now we need to take the plans and then we start. Now individuals, on the individuals, well, I need to figure out your passion. I'll start with passion because if you don't know what you're passionate about, how do you even start in the first place? You end up having stories like, I went to university, I didn't even know what, why I was there. Maybe my parents want me there, so I have four years of my life for a certificate for my parents, right? So we need to ensure that every single person contributing to the way forward can figure out their passion, what they want to do with their life. And to find your passion is basically simple. You ask yourself two questions. What do you love doing the most? Then list as many as you can. And what am I good at? So the intersection of these two will be your passion. If you love writing, you're good at writing. That means you're passionate about writing. If you love building stuff, you're good at building stuff. That means you love building stuff. So you look at career, that is in line with the stuff you're passionate about. Then we start from there. So I think these are the angles we have to look at. Everybody has a role to play. It's not just government, it's not just companies. We all have role to play. So collectively, if we can come together, have conversations, understand what is there and where to start from, then I think, as I said, 20 years to come, we can be getting there. If not, we'll still meet, miss another 20 years of everything being important. And that's what's going to happen if we don't. We'll be here, companies with important driverless car. All drivers will lose their job. Because nobody here is developing one. And even when they break down, we can't fix them. We, we fly somebody from abroad to come and pay our car for us, and they'll use taxpayers' money to pay them our money. 
So these are the challenges on the ground that if we don't start now and start working around it, a time will come, just like chocolate and cocoa situation. We produce the cocoa, nobody eats chocolate. Even my birthday, I'm not eating chocolate because it's too expensive. But we don't eat middle for breakfast. A time will come, our information data, which is going to be the next commodity, we can't even afford them because everything will be taken away, processed, and we can't pay for it. So that's the way forward. Thank you. Yes, yes, to, yes to add up, right? I don't know which country we are in. <laughs> Believe me, like what he just ended on, I don't know which country we are in. We are a country blessed with so many resources. Look, we have the basic one that we know. We have gold. This gold, take it raw, sell it to the white man. We have timber. This timber, we take it raw and sell it to the white man. We have bauxite. This bauxite, we take it raw and sell it to the white man. Recently, we have di discovered lithium. Lithium, too, believe me, we are going to take it raw and send it to the white man. <laughs> You know what lithium does? All the phones that you have, the batteries are made up of lithium. Lithium is a modern gold. It seems, it seems somehow, somewhere, we, we sign an agreement with the white man that whatever he has done, we won't touch it. That's how I see it. Because look, our first president, who is um, Dr. Graham Kroma, Kruma built factories throughout the whole country. Everywhere that you go, every region, you see a factory built by Kruma. <laughs> then what did he do? The Kruma went further to give free secondary education to the north. So when the Kruma, even though he has these factories there, he has no skilled labor to mine these factories. Because in the secondary schools, we don't teach you how to use a screwdriver. We don't teach you anything. We are like, we are, we are being trained like secretaries. So we are like science secretaries. What, what is the, what is the focus of the secondary education? Are we being trained to just go and uh, be black or what? Because in the technical education that they use have the hammer and carpenters and those things, which we should have given them free. Okay, for us to get those skilled labor to mine our factories. But we gave free education to secondary schools. 60 years down the line, the then president comes in, the MPP president comes in. He too has gone to all the regions, one district, one factory, one district, one factory. And what did he also do? Gave free education to secondary schools. What did he do? He gave free education to secondary schools. Secondary schools, what do we do? We just sit down, we teach you theoretical, and then you go. So you, you will end up not having even the workforce to mine these factories when, when, when the government is not there. And so next time, all these factories are going to collapse. And we all finish schools here, we will not have jobs to do. But here's the case, the government has sunk so much millions into these factories. Basically, there's something wrong with us. <laughs> because I don't, I don't seem to understand it. Look, the university, how many students do you have here? Who in this university knows how to even do a, a hammer or something? But we are calling ourselves engineers. What, what are we engineers of? What are we engineering? <laughs> what are we engineering? Like ourselves here, do things. And what's the way forward? How can we be able to overcome these challenges and reach the peak of innovation as our theme for today's case? So I will start with Mr. Ajuman. Well, I will make it personal. When I started my journey, as I said, I don't have a degree yet. So you can imagine the frustration, the pressure from parents, society, and friends. So back in senior high school, when I was talking about computers, I also did an electrical and um, illegal connection at school. And I was nearly expelled because there was a problem. I need power to iron my dress. 
and then the dining hall was full. So I went to the dormitory, opened the wire, connected the session board, and I did we iron our address for entertainment. That was innovation. I, I was very young at the time. I just felt like it's a problem I have to solve. But school authority felt that this guy is a bad guy, he wants to bend the school. Right. So they have to demonize me. But because I was very young, uh, they had some sympathy with me. So I, I was able to stay in the school. So that's one of the challenges. When we have authorities who don't understand the passion we carry, the love for the things we do, they might think you're wasting your time. And everybody can relate. Go and read books and pass exams. If your results come and it's not AAA or 111, and then you are failing and you are playing with your toys, 